Hey everyone, it's that time of the month again. Well, technically it's the new month, we are in August already, but uh, yeah, at the end of each month I do some prediction of which units are potentially coming in the next couple of weeks within that time frame. This time it's August, so if you're new to the channel, this is just my personal prediction. None of this has to actually come to fruition. But from recent months, last half year since I've been doing this, I was right about, let's say, 75%. I just had my full copium on uh, Hawkeye releasing, but I gave up on that dream. And we got news today about the Dark Visions uh, bulletin board. And that one stated it was just um, the JP18 version of Dark Visions. So no Hawkeye this month either. Feels bad, man. But yeah, um, the units we're looking at, I will judge them based on the experiences from Clash of Worlds and Dark Visions meta. So this really doesn't take into account trials because there are no trials anymore other than that one super simple trial that everyone's gonna one shot with Vivi. So, hmm. All right, so let's dive right in and have some fun with the units. Well, number one, we don't actually have no information on that. There is still three more global exclusive fan units that we're supposed to get. I know the slide states that we should get one per month. We didn't get one in July, but I guess reason for that is we got two global exclusive units with Ling and Louise and asking the global team for three global exclusive units in one month. I think everyone should agree that that was a mistake on my part. That was just too unrealistic. But I am absolutely sure that we are going to see another global exclusive fan unit in August. It's time, they had enough time to prepare too. And we are going to need more for Clash of Wills. I mean, the next Clash of Wills is another fire stage. So I'm assuming that the fan unit is going to come out at the end of the month, such that it can be used for the next um, Clash of Wills as in, in September. So yeah, but none information, no other information on that available yet. We don't know which one of the three it's going to be. So let's skip ahead to Sephiroth. Everyone in the Mondo knows he's coming. And I'm absolutely sure that he will be coming on Thursday. It would make the absolute most sense. Get this premium disaster out of the way. Don't prolong it. I think we as a community, we are all fed up by the um, premium treatment, the bad rates, etc, etc. So it's probably in the best interest, even for Gumi, to just release Sephiroth, have everyone cash in on the hype because he is the best unit in the game, in terms of damage that is, and just forget about premium stuff until uh, Final Fantasy X. But yeah, uh, Sephiroth's Materia, a uh, Trustmaster is a Materia, 60% Katana through single wield, meaning Shield or no shield, doesn't matter, which is the good kind of single wield. 50% LB damage and um, clothes are a super trust master at 80 attack, which is crazy good. Everyone's gonna love it, everyone's gonna want it. Even more so than um, the clothes from Cobalt Blade Noctis or Vermilion Blade Ardent. They are still the best piece of uh, equipment for the races that they have killers on, meaning human and reaper respectively. But other than that, you do probably want a couple of uh, Sephiroth's STMR just for the AT attack. It also has 15 defense, 100 stop resistance and Sephiroth himself also gains 500 static attack. And this is also one of the bad things about the Super Trust Master, it locks you into that cloth piece. and. Like I mentioned, Cobalt Blade, Noctis and Arden, they have pretty good STMRs as well with killers on them. And the same applies to um, Ifrit Rain and Shiva Last, well, their STMRs also being gloves. They also have killers on them, which kind of locks Sephiroth out of these killer options, but he's that slot efficient that he, it doesn't really even matter in the grand scheme of things. It's just a nuisance, but it doesn't matter eventually. His vision card is one of those premium vision cards that uh, unlocks at EX plus 3 and has all the passives and levels unlocked immediately. So he has 125 attack, just like Tifa's card, 50% LB, 100% physical and magical reaper killer, 
and he also gains, or Final Fantasy 7 units gain 500 static attack. It's pretty much carbon copy of Tifa's vision card, just a different killer. Tifa's card has Beast Killer 100%, he's got Reaper. And much like Tifa, he is a Chainer in base, uh, SR, and a finisher, LB finisher in Brave Shift. He is, though, locked to Dark for the most part. So yeah, a carbon copy, so to speak, in terms of uh, kit and uh, what he does. It's just that his numbers are significantly higher than Tifa's. So how good is Sephiroth? I mean, he's the number one burst DPS in the game. Uh, everyone knows about this, so that's probably why everyone's gonna pull for him. He's got a 25% Katana Imperil on his LB, which is very good. You don't need to bring... Who has Katana Imperil? I, I think Assassin's Shadow has one, so you don't need him anymore, which is cool. And uh, yeah, he's got an incredible TMR, STMR and Vision card. There's nothing else to say about this. Uh, the bad things, like I said, super bare bones kit. Uh, it's just, like I said, carbon copy of Tifa, just different elements. Passives are locked behind EX plus two. I mean, the passives, yeah, static attack, instant LB for, it's, it's kind of whatever, um, but it still hurts somehow. Um, if you have an EX plus one Sephiroth, obviously he's going to be so much more worse than an EX plus three Sephiroth because you're missing a total of 1000 static attack and that's going to hurt you a lot. Um, and the other bad thing is, because of the Super Bare Bones kit, he doesn't really do anything for the party. He has no killer buffs, he has no resistance buffs. It's kind of, yeah, he just uh, destroys things, pretty much. So should you pull? I mean, yes. Um, and I, I've seen a couple people complain, oh, you're using Zidane for every kill, yeah. Obviously, I am using Zidane for every um, clear in Dark Visions because Zidane was the best unit and I told everyone to get Zidane because he is going to be relevant and Zidane is going to stay relevant for the next four months too. Because guess what? You have six slots in Dark Visions and you have six slots in Cash of, Cla Cash of Wills, exactly. Clash of Wills and you do want to bring as many DPS as possible. And there's only one really good DPS coming out in the next, or two actually, two DPS that are worth mentioning that may uh, eclipse, or they will eclipse certainly, but for different reasons, that eclipse um, Zidane. And those are Cyan, Samurai Cyan, who's come, who we will be talking about later, and Auron. Both of them are locked to elements, whereas Zidane is not. And that's the reason why Zidane is still going to stay relevant for a very long time and I mean, yeah, you can complain all you want, but let me tell you this, I banned someone yesterday for blatantly saying, oh, you're using Ling and Zidane, rip dislike, you're gonna get banned for this comment. Even if it's jokingly, I have a zero tolerance policy towards this BS. Don't do it, it's your own fault for not pulling Zidane or not being able to save for him because you thought doing 250 daily pulls is worth it. They're not. Don't do stupid things and listen to people who actually give you good advice. And that's not, if you don't trust me, trust, trust Sinsar. He also said the same about the Dane back in the day. So yeah, rent and um, yeah, other than that, Sephiroth, awesome unit. I'm gonna pull for him. Uh, I will try to get, to get, get his EX plus three Whenever he releases, I set aside pretty much all my lapis, 144,000 for that, so fingers crossed that I get him. And yeah, let's move on to the Near Vision Awakened that we are supposed to get with Sephiroth, and that is Barret. He does get a cool, few cool things in his base form, his uh, LB gets a little upgrade at 100x final hit. He's also doing a lot of things, but none of them really matter that much. He's okay as an NVA, but not the best, honestly. Uh, in his Brave Shift, though, he's becoming uh, something like a tank. He actually isn't all that bad as a tank, if I am not totally mistaken. So yeah, but we do have a lot of tanks now. Afmo, Gabranth, Snow, Behemi. Uh, we also have Gladio, so there's a lot of physical tanks already, and do we need one more? 
Nah, and he, he kind of fails in that regard. He does have good passives and all, but it's just whatever at this point with physical tanks, honestly. So let's check out the next new vision. It's a story event unit. Um, we are probably getting the story, uh, we are getting the unit, but probably skipping the story event because that's what global does. We also skipped um, Lord of the Seas Nicole's story event and nobody knows why he became a pirate all of a sudden. So we may also skip Youthful Sun Thunder Sakura story event, but no judgment yet. Maybe they'll, they'll implement it. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, uh, Sakura is literally a, a carbon copy of Lord of the Seas Nicole. The only difference is she uses lightning instead of water. So she has pretty much the same materia. It's just silence immunity, 30% light re lightning resistance, 100% LB fill rate. Super Trust Master are also close with also very questionable stat, stat allocations. 64 Spirit, 42 Defense, 50% Lightning Resistance and 50% Plant Fairy Killer. I mean, this is great for Aerith. She kind of does want Spirit, but it does not have MP on it, so nobody's gonna use this. The Vision card is, is, is literally, absolutely literally, Lord of the Seas Nicole. It's the same. So I'm not gonna mention it because it's just meh. Base form, uh, Sekiro is a lightning amplifying unit with some Chaos Wave Awakened magic skills and Brave Shift. She buffs those lightning evoked chains, much like Nicole did water evoked chains in Bolting Strike and Chaos Wave Awakened frames. Super, super uninterest. I mean, it's good, but I mean, Lord of Seas Nicole is good, so Sekiro is also good, but it's just so lazy, honestly. So how good is she? I mean, she potentially makes lightning teams viable. Um, has 160 AOE plant killer, but that one is locked, locked behind EX plus 2 on global. On JP it's locked behind EX plus 3. And um, I mean, at this point, why not just use Bards? I mean, yeah, he's got 100%, but at least Bards de de deals more damage probably. I haven't done the math, but that's just me. Uh, she does have a strong Trustmaster reward. I feel like 100% LB fill rate is good at this. Uh, still good. Um, but yeah, other than that, her Super Trustmaster is super useless. It's literally a carbon copy of Lord of the Seas, Nicole, and the kid is still bare bones. So yeah, should you pull? I mean, she actually literally does the same things like Nicole does, just with a different element. The difference is though that we don't really have anybody with a 135 lightning in peril that is also relevant. She also only has 300% stat buffs and Aerith has 400% stat buffs. And also keep in mind that there is no lightning stage next Dark Visions uh, and in Clash of Worlds. So I would actually totally skip her and I will, I will not even use tickets like I did for um, Nicole. So. I just hope to somehow off-banner her later on and get her to EX plus one for Dark Visions because there might be actually a stage later on where she could be useful. But, I mean, she's not going to be super necessary anyway. And that pretty much concludes Sakura. Let's move on to Citra, one of the NVAs that comes along with her. And she um, is, yeah, based on evocation damage, un non elemental evocation damage, even at 128x, as you can see at the bottom. So it's not that bad, actually. Um, she also deals boating strike frames. She can quadcast um, innate black magic, green magic, and abilities, which I feel like is cool. But that's about it. I mean, she also, I, I'm not quite sure because she has um, an AX plus 3 unlock on JP, so it's going to be. Potentially EX plus two for global, but is she free? I am not sure. Not really sure about this. It's kind of rare to see. I feel like kind of rare to see um, NVA units have unlockable abilities by EX level. So we'll see about that. Uh, this is a brave shift, which looks pretty cool. It's the light veritas, I think. I really don't care about the story, so. Not quite sure, but it looks like, and even from the naming schemes, it should be uh, Light Veritas here. 
And yeah, her LB is a light evocation damage at 80x, which is okay. Um, also increases her LB damage and uh, increases spirit and defense by a laughable 74%. But it's also 24 hits. Uh, it's all enemies. So keep that in mind. It may or may not break or even trigger if you pull it pull it um, or activate the ability once the boss is actually at 0% HP already. But she's okay. I mean, she has a 200% LB boost in her Grandis, single use, but only increases Mac and Spirit by 280, so you actually need some kind of actual buff, such as uh, Cetra Era, for example, 400 stats and 250 LB, or use Sedane's STMR. And then we are also getting Mediana, um, our first Super Limit Burst unit. Uh, I have not talked about Super Limit Burst yet on this channel, so let me briefly explain this. Um, Super Limit Burst units are units that don't have a Brave Shift. Those are not necessarily Neo Vision Awakened units, those can be and will be Neo Vision based units as well. And um, how this works is you wait a couple of turns and then the units, they spark up and their naming nameplate at the bottom of the screen becomes red, signalizing you that the super, super limit burst is active. And the super limit burst has a cooldown. It's five turns, I believe, at base EX0 or EX1, I'm not quite sure, but I know for sure that if you have the unit at EX plus three, you act you can use the super limit burst on turn three, which makes it kind of well, some strategies actually re revolve around that you can super limit burst on turn three, but uh, the end game here is that it doesn't matter whether you have um, your limit burst gauge at full or not, because once you can super limit burst, your LB gauge is going to get filled automatically, which is one of the cool things. On the other hand, units these super limit burst units they don't have a brave shift meaning they cannot fill two roles and i will show you uh, with cyan later in this video why that is a bad thing for or in terms of game design from my point of view i know that some people will love this because they don't have to get two different forms but in the long term it's going to hurt you more than it actually benefits you from my point of view you made this um, disagree with me and that is fine and I do see the point um, in the disagreement I've had countless debates on the discord about this so I know both sides I feel like yeah the the pro side is just as um, okay to 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 think as is the con side uh, where I am at pretty much but yeah uh, Mediana has a pretty strong super limit burst. It has a 135 ice in peril, which is cool. It also increases her ice damage, amplifies 35%, and it's a uh, 125 ice damage with 50% spirit ignore, meaning it's actually 250 LB mod, which is cool. It's also protected bayonet, which is similar to bolting strike. As you can see, one of her passives is at EX plus 3, so EX plus 2 for us in global. Keep in mind, this is Japanese server stuff here. It's going to be 1000 magic, which is crazy static magic. So yeah, she, she looks pretty strong to me, but I haven't done the math on her yet. And next up is one of my favorites. Or yeah, she is one of my favorites in Final Fantasy VI, and it's Invincible General Celis. Um not sealed, Celis. <laughs> uh, so, um, I feel like she's one of those characters, yes, she didn't get so much spotlight in Final Fantasy VI, but whenever she appeared, I just loved everything about it. And yeah, her uh, chest master reward is uh, Spirit and MP, which Aerith loves, and it's also 50% Aquan, killer, physical, and magical. Her Super Trust Master is a sword that can only be used by Final Fantasy VI units, so keep that in mind. Can't equip this on Starlight Elena, for example. I also see I made a design mistake. I should have... Oh well, you'll probably see it here over here. I forgot to 
press tab once more, but it's fine. Uh, the sword has 180 attack, magic and spirit, which is cool. Um, a little bit low for a true DPS, but for uh, units such as Starlight Elena or Elena, it's actually good. 50% LB damage, 30% physical and magical evasion, and 250% uh, 250 static attack, magic and spirit. But again, Starlight Elena can't wear it because she's not a Final Fantasy VI unit. So Final Fantasy VI units, it's it's a good one for them. I mean, it's probably going to be used only on Celis anyway. But I like it. It's good. Well, actually, Terra is a Final Fantasy VI unit as well. Maybe this is good for her. I haven't done the math, but it it, it sounds cool. Her vision card, as she's not a premium unit, you unlock it at the X plus one again. And it's 50 attack, base attack and 50 base magic at level one. At 10, it's 100 to both. Level four passive is 25% LB. 50% attack and magic on level 7 and Final Fantasy 6 units at level 10 also gain 300 static attack, defense, magic and spirit. Celis in her base form is a magic tank who also trains in Stardust Ray and in Brave Shift she is an ice supporter who also can um, chain in SR. How good is she? Um, she's the best magic tank in the game, hands down, but there are no trolls to use her in. She has AoE Dragon Killer, 160%, but it's locked behind EX plus 2 on the global server. It is locked behind EX plus 3 on JP. She has a super strong... Uh, let me, let me fix that, let me fix that. Alright, sorry about that. Um, she has a super strong TMR and Super Trust Master. The reason why I fixed that is because the Super Trust Master is not locked to Wedge. That's the reason. Uh, it's locked to Final Fantasy VI units. Um, her Super Trust Master is also great. She's an amazing Ice Team supporter, uh, especially when combined with Mediana for her 135 Ice Imperil. And um, she also does respectable damage as a magic tank because she can reach absurd amounts of SPR and her limit burst is a 135 LB mod in base form that scales off of spirit. So it's going to hit pretty hard. Think <coughs> um, solitary patron snow, but better. And what I also like about Celis is that she has a preemptive cover. The bad things, um, there are no trials. And yeah, like I said, her stuff is locked behind EX levels. So should you pull? Um, should we ever get challenging content? Um, Clash of Wills maybe? Uh, she will be the best magic tank to pick from or choose from. She is also going to give you one more team option to fight bosses. Because ice teams are going to... Or ice teams, I mean, uh, are going to get become viable. Which is, I feel like, good for the game in general. We then have... Light teams, wind teams, fire, ice, um, and so on and so forth. So that's a, the, and water, obviously, and lightning. So there's a whole lot of flexibility going on. She also has an amazing sprite, one of my most favorites. And what I didn't mention yet, but she has built a Nephilim side, which I like. And um, the last unit for today's video is Samurai Scion. He is also a super limit burst unit and a new vision base unit that, uh, uh, so to speak. His trust master reward is a 50% attack materia and 40% avian and demon killer. And yeah, this is no mistake. I don't know why he has 40% avian demon killer, but that's kind of a weird number to me. His super trust master is a two handed katana with at 215 attack, which is very strong. 105 to 155 variants. And Final Fantasy VI units only also gain access to the passives, which are 75% LB damage and 20% physical evasion. His vision card is a carbon copy, or it's the same that Seller says, so I'm not gonna go through it. And yeah, Samurai Saiyan is a Earth physical LB finisher and he also trains Stardust Ray. So how good is he? Um, Saiyan has super strong damage. He's about on par with Tifa, according to very early calculations I did a couple of weeks ago. Um, but it should be about good. So if you skip Tifa or Sephiroth, 
you get your consolation prize in, in that regard. He's got a super strong super trust master and is very easy to gear and that is one of the things that super limit burst units have all in common. They do have a lot of passives that do so so much that you can actually overcome some of the losses by not having a brave shift. So these units they're gonna have a lot of defense, a lot of spirit, high resistances, um, super high passive killer buffs or passive killers I mean um, such that you don't really feel the downside of not having a brave shift but it's still a bad thing from my point of view because imagine you'd want a unit such as I mean I, I, I used um, Cacteria last, last uh, on Friday was it Saturday it was yesterday yeah I used Cacteria yesterday as a evasion unit in base form and I used her for pure DPS in brave shift this won't work with super limit burst units because you just don't have a brave shift so you cannot have two roles in one unit and that is my issue with super limit burst units i don't have an issue with the super limit burst as is i think super limit burst is a cool concept but not having a brave shift that is a bad thing because it just doesn't allow you to be more flexible with units Units won't be able to cover two roads in one. And that is the issue I have with Super Limit Burst. Um, the other thing I feel like is bad is that the Super Limit Burst availability depends on the EX level. And in the case of Cyan, the sprite is just super generic. I mean, it's like a discount, um, what's his name, from FMA, the, uh, the guy with the eye patch. I forgot his name again. Bradley, Bradley, that's his name. It's just a discount Bradley, pretty much. And his kit is still super bare bones, even though he does not have a brave shift. So that's just lazy game design to me. And he also doesn't have a 135 Earth in peril. I mean, if he is a super limit burst unit, and if he has that special limit burst, why doesn't he get a 135 Earth in peril? It caps out at 130. So useless and such a lazy design. I, I can't even with Cyan. But yeah, should you pull? I mean, even though I don't like the unit at all, he is pretty strong if you skipped Tifa or Sephiroth for that matter. But keep in mind, other than limit LB filling, he doesn't really do anything. He cannot fill two roles because he does not have a brave shift. But yeah, like I mentioned, if you skipped Tifa's and or Sephiroth because they do have that predatory premium treatment, you get your constellation price here for 40k pity, and I assume it's going to be 40k pity as per usual before the premium debacle. Um, you get it for 40k and potentially sell it along the way, which is okay in my in my book. All right. And this is my release prediction as per usual. So I am absolutely convinced that we are getting Sephiroth next week, AKA on Thursday. The week after that is going to be Youthful Thunder Sakura, I believe, um, with no story event. I fully believe they will skip story events for as long as they can and rather take the um, bad press and bad reactions they get from players than actually doing some work in, for this game. Then um, I expect our Global X Fanox fan unit on August 19th and Celis on 26th of August, August together with Cyan. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I always enjoy making these videos. Have a nice rest of the Sunday morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're from. <coughs> I'm losing my voice again. And we'll see each other at the very latest on a first day for some Sephiroth pulls or whatever it is. See you then, bye bye.